Well, Stephen, delighted to have you with us. Uh, you've uh, just retired in the summer. Uh, how's this few first few months been? Uh, this new chapter of your career. Uh, it's been hectic. Um, it's a big change from what I'm used to been doing. You come out of school and you you just fall into football and it becomes normal and it's a lifestyle for that long. But it's it's definitely a change. Um, Everything as a footballer you don't think about, you need to think about as a coach and I've learned off some great coaches over the years so just try and implement my own style but take the bits that I liked from, from each manager that I worked with. So some of the, the tactics and you know the way you want to manage, does that come from that your time at, at Everton as well? Probably the biggest, I've said this many times, biggest thing or biggest manager I learned from was Martinez and that was because we went from one extreme to the other. His upbringing as a Spanish background and how he wanted to see how he seen football was something that was totally new to me. But I loved every minute of it, and that's why I probably performed my best under him. Um, and there was loads of small things and small details that you just take notes of over the years. And and then when you go into coaching, it's just about trying to pass them on and and shape a team into the way you want to play. So if you cast your mind back to, to that time when you signed for Everton, what do you remember and you know how it came about and you know coming down to Liverpool and, and signing that contract at Finch Farm? Um, it was a whirlwind um, at the time just because of my situation. There was a lot of clubs after me and um, I, I remember going down for my medical one Saturday and I was coming back from a knee injury so I was more concerned about oh no, what if they don't sign me rather than being looking forward to it. Um, but once I got it signed in that, it was, you could tell from the first minutes that it was a fantastic club from the chairman down. Um, the people at the club were were there to back you, they were there to help you as much as they can and, and they wanted, you get the sense and the feeling that they wanted you to do well and I thrived on that over the period of time when I was at Everton. And you're obviously a favourite amongst fans as well. Uh, what favourite moments do you recall from you know playing in front of them at Goodison Park? Uh, there was loads. Obviously, the hat trick. Everybody will think that's the the one moment that that's the best. But um, one of the most enjoyable ones for me was we played when we beat Arsenal at home, um, and the performance on that day was unbelievable. I, I scored a goal. Um, <clears throat> Big Rom scored, and then I think Kev tried to claim it, but it was an after own goal. So, but that day. Our performance, what we worked on during the week, everything just fell into place and, and it was one of the most enjoyable games of football I've actually played in, so that was another memory. Um, but to be honest, having the chance to play in the Premier League at Everton, at Goodison, was, it was amazing. Um, I, I obviously had took a bit of time to settle and, and get comfortable, but on the whole, my time there's some of my favourite in my career. And of course, it wasn't just you know on the field that you're connected with the fans off the field. You did a lot of work with Everton in the community, you know, Christmas dinners, food banks. How important was that for you to you know give back to you know the support they gave you? It was really big. I think it was more. I was fortunate. I fell into football, and it was a it was a hobby that turned into a career. And and the more successful I got, and and the higher I went up, and and social media taking off, there was too many good opportunities to to raise awareness, to give something back and uh, it was a very small thing for me to do that could have a big impact um, but again it, it tells you the stature of the club where they backed every single you know, initiative that I'd done and, and they contributed as well so uh, it, it was just fitting um, I think from Glasgow coming down to Liverpool the cities are very similar, the people are very similar and, and I loved the morals and the background of the club and what it stood for and it, and it aligned exactly what, what my personal feelings were. Did that help you as well moving down you know, to a city, of course you say, is similar to Glasgow, it's a, a working class city, you know, um, people are so caring for each other as well and uh, you know you must have settled in fairly quickly um, with that. Yeah, um, they did, they, they tell you they're honest as well which is when you're in a taxi and it's a, it's a red, it's a taxi driver, he'll no shy in telling you what he thinks so uh, but I love that. I love the honesty. I love the how warm they were. Very warm people, and, and they weren't shy in coming up and chatting to you, whether it be asking for an autograph or telling you how you played at the weekend. And uh, to be honest, I thrived on that over a period of time. Uh, I would have said when I signed, my confidence was not at its level when I was coming back from a knee injury. Um, 
but then once you show that you have got worth and that you put in a hundred percent, the fans will back you constantly, and um, that appeared to be the case for me. And like you said, at the end of the day, the, the relationship I have with Everton as a club, the fans, and everybody involved with the club, I'm, I, uh, they've all turned into friends, which is lifelong friends rather than just acquaintances through football. So how much did you know your experience at Everton and the city of Liverpool you know, shape the person that you are today? Oh, a lot. Like I said, it was very comfortable because it was very similar to my upbringing. Um, but then when I moved to Everton, I started a family myself and and all these aspects. It, you, they come into the environment that you're in and, and mine was of having the morals of working hard, which, again, Evertonians expect from you. And, and also to give your all and, and enjoy it. And like I said, some of the best memories I had in a football pitch were at Everton. And do you keep in touch with anyone uh, in the camp? We were saying off camera that you, you know, you had a really good relationships with our captain Seamus Coleman as well. Yeah, uh, Shamey and me are close friends, and our families are really friendly. Um, but to be honest, in every department of the club, I still speak to a lot of the people from the kitchen staff to to the kit men. Um, uh, Bainsey's obviously still there in the capacity that I speak to and uh, analysts the lot. So uh, it's a special club. The people that are here are here for a reason and. They're here long term, and that's why I'm still friendly with them all because, um, like I said, they're, they're friends now, they're not just acquaintances. And as well, you know, speaking about your uh, management ambitions, we've got a new manager um, at Everton as well, Rafael Benitez. Uh, what have you made of his appointment and, you know, the start he's made so far? Yeah, it was a, it was a big appointment, I think. Um, obviously, with the history of the manager, it was going to be one that would get a lot of attention, um, but I think from the way he started, and, and I think the one thing you can guarantee is that he'll, he'll make a team that are solid and hard to beat, and then on top of that, to win games. Um, now, going forward and the quality that's in the squads, there for all we see, that uh, you've got a lot of players who are a goal threat, you've got good quality who can control a game, um, and the, and the defence is, is getting stronger as the seasons go, but um, I think that it takes time. I think no more so than when Martinez came in. We didn't win a game until September, um, and then we went on to have a fantastic couple of years. And um, that's the one thing that this will only get better over time because as the players get more familiar with the manager and the system and and what's expected, then it becomes second nature to them. And and it just happens and, and it flows much better than, than maybe it does at the moment. And as well, you know, he's leading us into an exciting new chapter with a new stadium at you know, Bramley Moor Dock. Uh, you know, Goodison Park holds so much, so many memories, but this new stadium is going to be incredible. Yeah, it is. on one hand there is a sadness that you've got to leave Goodison because it's such a fantastic stadium um, with the atmosphere that it generates. But for Everton to go to that next level and, and compete in, in the revenue streams that a new stadium it's bigger capacity and and everything that goes along with it is a must for the club. I think it's as a club like Everton is constantly trying to progress and become bigger and challenge at the top end of the league. You've you've got to improve. Now you've got a world class training facility. Um, the next thing was going to be the stadium, and and it's exciting times. It's going to be maybe a couple of years away, but it's really exciting times to have a brand new stadium. And you know, talking about the squad as well as any players that you've been watching that you know stand out from from the squad that you you admire. Dominic obviously he's somebody who was young player came in and he's progressed as the year goes on and I think a few years ago maybe looking at him he was hopeful that he would score goals and get his chance but now every well, every year since you've seen him progress he's more mature he's he's more comfortable in that role of being the main striker um, he's somebody who's impressed year on year and it's about kicking on and, and, and continuing that because he's obviously got England aspirations Um but I think throughout the squad we've got real quality in in terms of the, each position. Yes, you need to add year on year just to keep competing and have a freshness, but the depth within the squad is something that's definitely um, the biggest solid thing that gives me confidence going into this season. And as well, you know, we were touching on earlier that you've, you have retired and you're taking up a coaching role uh, overseeing you know, the next generation of stars here at Hearts in Edinburgh. Um, you know, how much satisfaction does you know, this role give you that you can you know, oversee uh, you know, potentially new players that are going to break onto the professional scene? Throughout my career as a player I've always just tried to give advice out to, to the younger players coming through. Um, but now that I've stopped and you, and you actually sit back and take note, when you're a player, you're 
main focus subconsciously is yourself. You're focused on recovery, making sure you're ready for training, taking the tactics in, and then making sure you perform on a Saturday. Whereas with that all out away now, it's good to be able to enjoy just passing on all the knowledge and the tips that I've had. And I've got aspirations to be a manager. Um, I definitely want to be, I know I want to be. Um, but you've got to learn and understand how processes work, how things are best came across and, and refine all the things I've learned for the managers I've worked under. So um, it's the first steps of my journey, but you need to work just as hard as a coach as you did as a player. And just finally as well, you know, for you personally, you know, the long-term plans and long-term targets, how special would it be to, you know, continue that coaching journey down south and, you know, potentially at Everton and, you know, potentially in dugout at brand new dock in a new stadium? Um, as a coach and a manager, I'll have the same aspirations as I did as a player, that I want to go to the top. Um, I'm fortunate that I've got a good job at the moment and one that I can learn and develop, but I do want to become a first team manager and then progress that as far as I can. And Obviously Everton's a, a club that's really close to, to me and had a big impact in my career, so I can never say never, I'll take it step by step.